and I was just waving at them and my mother was like get down now and I'm like okay I'll climb down but for me it was just uh, having fun as a kid Good morning. Today I'm in Idaho Springs, Colorado. This is the city that I was born in many years ago and uh, I wanted to come back sort of for a nostalgia tour. It's about uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes from Evergreen where I've been the last several days and maybe about 25 minutes outside of uh, Lakewood, Denver area. And I'm in the downtown area right now. There was just too much noise out there on the street. So I want to tell you about Idaho Springs. I was basically born here, well not literally because there is no hospital here in Idaho Springs. So my parents were living here in a little trailer park and they drove down into Denver where I was born and then they came back up here. So I lived about the first five or six years of my life here. There's maybe three reasons that I came up to Idaho Springs today. The first is sort of a nostalgia tour to go back to some of the places that I went to as a kid. Uh, the second is it's hot. It's like 96, 97 degrees down in Denver. And so I decided to come up to Idaho Springs, a little bit higher in elevation, a little bit cooler. And the valley's a little bit narrower here so I can get in the shadow of the valley um, and get out of the heat. Reason number three, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the step band. And I've got all of these pieces and parts that came from the subfloor and from the ceiling panels. So there's like three and a half sheets of uh, three quarter inch plywood, some foam, a bunch of sheets of aluminum. And I want to store those instead of laying flat like they are now here. I want to put them standing sideways uh, along the side of the step van. So basically I want to uh, create some way to put straps to attach them so they can sit upright on the edges of the wall so I'm not taking up as much floor space. The first thing I need to do is remove this piece of angle steel here from the wall. Originally I thought maybe I would put the kitchen on this side on the passenger side but I've decided to put it on the driver's side instead. So I'm going to remove this and hopefully I'll get to reuse this for the support for the cross members for the bed. So I'll reattach this to the wall near the back and get an identical a uh, piece of angle steel to go on the opposite side and then run uh, one inch square tubing side to side and maybe four of those to support the three quarter inch plywood that I'm going to use underneath the bed. Obviously this whole thing is just temporary to hold the boards on the side until I'm able to repurpose them and salvage them and use them in other parts of the step van. Um, and so what I purchased is some of these uh, lag screws I guess. Uh, these are sheet metal on one end and then just some washers. Then I found in my scraps an eye bolt that happens to fit into one of the existing uh, screw holes from the piece of uh, angle that I just pulled out. So I'm going to use that. What I've done is I've uh, put these washers on here thinking that the uh, metal hook from the ratchet strap can go behind the washer and that this gets it as close as I can to the actual uh, aluminum rib here. I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, please give me your advice and your input. I'm gonna try to drive really careful and get this posted as quickly as possible so that you can give me feedback um, on what I need to change or a better way of going about doing this. Uh, again, the goal is to try to clear up some space on the floor. So this is what I've got. Oh, and by the way, you might have noticed I put some boards underneath just to keep uh, all the stuff I'm storing from scraping the new floor. Idaho Springs is about three blocks long for the main downtown area where I'm at. And it's a bunch of little souvenir shops, coffee shops, restaurants, gift stores, things like that. It's sort of a touristy town. So when you head out of Denver about an hour, you get to the major ski resorts up there. And this is part way up, so people are stopping here on the way up to rent skis. 
or they're stopping on the way back as they're wiped out and tired from skiing to get some lunch. And that's what I used to do, is stop here at a pizza restaurant called Bojo's, which I'm planning to go to today, which is just uh, like a block down this direction. Idaho Springs is probably, oh, maybe five minutes to drive from end to end through it. Behind me is a famous waterfall and a big water wheel that turns. I don't think the water wheel is being used anymore. It's more like just an iconic type landmark here. One of my fondest memories of Idaho Springs is the gold rush days. They would close down the three blocks, the main street that I just was at, and they would have, I think, one or two days of just celebrations. They had all sorts of little booths set up. But one of the funnest things was the local fire department, and my father was a member of the volunteer fire department, would have these races from one end of the street all the way up to the middle. And they had to do these um, carts that they would pull by hand. I think originally they had horses, uh, but I mean, the firemen used the horses originally, but in the race, they all run and they're wearing um, solid um, full body long johns. So my father had dyed his red and I think some of the other guys are red. I don't remember if they were all red or not. But so you have all these men, these firemen, wearing these red long johns and boots running up the street, pulling this old style cart with a uh, water pump on it to the center of the street. And then I think they had a ladder that they would erect a uh, really, really tall ladder, like two-story ladder, and a couple of guys would hold the ladder, and then they would climb the ladder up to the top. And I don't remember exactly what was involved in the contest, because I was only five or six years old, but it was so fun to watch them uh, running up the street and see my father doing that, and then climbing this ladder up to the top uh, as a part of this contest. The other part that was really fun was the 4th of July parade. And because my father was a member of the fire department, I was able to ride on the fire truck through the middle of town. So during gold rush days, they had this uh, locomotive, which you can see behind me, and they had a shootout. So they would have some actors dress up as cowboys, and they were the bad guys and the good guys. So the sheriff would try to stop this train robbery that was happening on this train that was parked here in the middle of the city. This doesn't move. Um, and so my father, I think, was one of the actors in that. And that was really fun as a kid for me because I was obsessed with Westerns. I had my little cowboy hat and little boots and I would go watch my father who was dressed up as a cowboy in this performance. And they'd have the shootout and of course the bad guy would lose and die and have fake blood and, and that was part of uh, the whole entertainment. One of the famous activities to do here at Idaho Springs is to go rafting. And that's what these guys are doing today. You see them going past on the rafts. There they are, there they're all waving. I'm gonna take a lunch break. This is Bo Joe's. It's uh, famous for mountain pies. It's pretty great pizza. This is Bojo's, the restaurant, and it's just gorgeous inside. It uh, just feels like Colorado. The smallest pizza, which is a one pound pizza, probably this big around, is $16. My pizza has arrived. Well, let me show you what you get for $16. And by the way, the tradition at Bojo's is to eat the pizza with honey. So they serve the pizza with a little container of honey, and you're supposed to put that on top of the pizza uh, as you eat it. That was a fun and fabulous lunch. A little bit expensive. Is it worth $16 for a small pizza or $32 for a large? I'd say no, except for sort of the nostalgic experience. Gonna go find a step van and I think find a place to take a nap. I'm at a trailer park here in Idaho Springs and there's a bunch of uh, mobile homes back here now. Um, but back in the 1960s when I was born, I think they had uh, different trailers here and some sort of like Airstream type trailer. I've seen photos of when I was born and I think my parents lived in this trailer park 
in a different trailer that existed at that time. Some of my earliest memories were of this mine back here, the Argo Mine, which is now open as a tourist destination. When I was a kid, it was completely closed and uh, there was big fences around it and it was a danger zone. They didn't want kids going up there. My earliest memories are in this house right here. We lived in this house when I was maybe a year and a half up until about two and a half or three. And I used to walk from here up to kindergarten, um, which was probably about uh, 10 or 15 blocks. And uh, this house has been replaced. It's been demolished. There used to be a very small house here, very similar to the house that's right next to it, uh, very small. But it's been demolished and replaced with this uh, large wooden, like, log house now. So uh, that was my earliest memories here. I remember uh, Easter egg hunts in the backyard. I remember my parents painting a white picket fence around the front. And they uh, actually, they built the fence and then they painted every other picket a different color, like uh, red, uh, blue, yellow, and white. Sort of like Partridge Family, 1970s uh, kind of look. And so that's how they painted the fence around this place. And then uh, the next house that we moved to when I was about three until about six, we lived in the larger house. This is the house that I used to live in when I was a child. It was an absolutely huge house when we lived in it. The entire first floor, which is, I guess, like a basement, was just dirt. There was nothing down there, just some standing walls. Behind me is a giant evergreen tree going up and up and up and up right here. When I was like, I don't know, four or five years old, my mother was uh, doing the dishes in the second story and she looked out and I was waving at her and I had climbed up to about here in the tree and about gave my mother a heart attack. So that's one of my parents' favorite stories to tell is about how I climbed this tree and scared them to death. And I was just waving at them and my mother was like, get down now. And I'm like, okay, I'll climb down. But for me, it was just uh, having fun as a kid. I think that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.